All right, folks, in this particular video, I'd like to be focusing upon the bifurcation ratio. And this is, in fact, a very important thing when it comes to geography, which as it relates to, to streams, right, on the surface of the landmass. Um, the bifurcation ratio, um, before we even jump to that, all right, in terms of the calculation and in terms of the understanding of it, um, I believe we need to understand what drainage basins are and what watersheds are. All right, also, we'll be highlighting, touching as well, um, the concepts associated with the basin's size as well as the actual shape of these existing sh um, basins themselves. All right, folks, this is in fact what you call an aerial view, right? This is an aerial view, which is a bird's eye view, a view from above, right? And basically, we are seeing a specific region here, a specific area. Um, these purple lines simply um, highlight or represent um, streams and tributaries and stuff like that. Now, just to highlight something very quickly, um, before I even jump to the definition of drainage basins and watershed, this area on the screen, this is a sea. All rivers eventually merge and they lead or they drain out into the sea. All right, and this is something which is very important. All right, that is actually where the mouth of the river in fact exists. Now, we are in fact seeing a dotted line here. All right, this dotted line is referred to as the watershed. Right, it is a border or a boundary, and it encloses a particular region or a particular area. This particular area or region, which is as you can see on the screen, which is basically associated with the purple lines representing the streams and rivers and stuff like that, that whole region is in fact referred to as the drainage basin. All right, the drainage basin. Okay, so by definition, now, all right, a drainage basin. As the name suggests, right, refer to an area, right, which is in fact drained by multiple streams, tributaries, or even rivers. And they are in fact bordered, drainage basins are in fact bordered by a watershed. All right, now students, this particular, this watershed I'm referring to here is in fact uh, associated with the development of ridges. This is a significant demarcation zone, relatively elevated because the streams which actually are in close proximity to those ridges, as we can see in the image here, these streams, like these areas here that I'm circling here, they are the first order streams, all right? They are the closest to the ridges and they flow downwards, eventually forming a very intricate network, all right? And these streams eventually merge into each other. It's a very detailed network or a very intricate network, and it varies. Every drainage basin would vary depending upon the size of the area, depending upon the topography of the slope, depending upon the rock type. All of these things are, in fact, factors which would influence the basin characteristics itself. Okay? <clears throat> now, we have to ask ourselves, what is the bifurcation ratio? And by definition, the bifurcation ratio, in fact, shows the relationship between the number of streams in one specific order to that of the next order, all right? And what happens is that after you determine that in a mathematical way, you determine the average or the mean of all ratios, all right? I will show you this now. Now, let us establish the understanding of um, this particular image here, all right? We know this; these dotted lines refer to the watershed, all right? Um, these intricate yet randomly placed um, lines within that, within the drainage basin itself, is in fact referred to as the, um, the streams and the tributaries and whatnot. The arrow here basically shows the, um, the direction of the main channel. Now, this is where it actually gets a little bit interesting, right? So look here, fill in the diagram on the screen. The first order streams are in fact the ones which are in fact closest all right, to the watershed. They originate closest to the watershed. Now, as you can see, the lines which are in red, all right, are in fact the ones which originate closest to the watershed. Let us count, let us put a, numer put a numerical value. So the red lines refer to first order streams. I'm going to put a one to basically highlight um, their order. All right. Now, students, this is actually very important. You have to make sure you establish a proper ordering system, um, stream ordering system first, 
before you determine an accurate bifurcation ratio. Now, the second order streams would in fact be associated when, uh, with the fact that uh, two first order streams or perhaps multiple first order streams merging together and in that in doing so they will actually create a second order stream all right look carefully at the screen now i want you to pay very close attention to this right now the lines which are in fact in green would in fact represent the second order why because they were created by two first order streams or two or more first order streams merging into a particular junction all right so second order streams are in fact created by first order streams merging at a particular point. Now I want you to remember something very important for me. And listen to this carefully. Two streams, two sorry, two stream orders merge to form a subsequently higher stream order. As we would have seen that the, uh, from the image here, the red lines represent the first order stream. They would merge to form a second order stream. However, if two streams of different orders are merged, all right, the resultant would be the higher of the two orders merged. For example, um, I'm going to show you something quickly here. This area here that I'm circling in pink, we are seeing a red merging with a green. But you realize I went on and I maintained the green line all the way down. And the reason for that is because um, if you have two stream orders, to different stream orders obviously you, you must pay um, close attention to the fact that um, credit will be given to the highest order or the higher of the two orders all right so keep that in mind for me please now that being said let us actually determine the third order stream or i should say streams all right from this particular diagram we only have one third order stream but sometimes you could actually have multiple all right so students let us determine the first order versus the second order and the third order so how many first order streams do we have let us count them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen we have fourteen first order streams for the second order streams how many do we have one two three four five six we have six what about the third order streams all right third stream orders we only have one all right now in the bifurcation ratio when we are calculating the bifurcation ratio um we have to take into consideration we must have accurate values for these first before we even do the calculation um also look at something very important for me please look at this area that i'm circling in black you see this region here i'm gonna put it in a different color i'll put it in yellow this region here, where you have the second and the, the two second order streams merging, this area in yellow, this is where the start of the third order stream begins. Check it out. The third order stream merging with the second order stream would maintain the third order as it go down. That is the reason why I didn't put, it appears as if you have three second order streams merging, but that's not the case. You just simply have two forming a third. All right, so keep that in mind for me, please. All right, let's go through this quickly. So we are doing the first ratio, which is the first order, the number of first order streams divided by the number of second order streams. We are seeing 14 divided by 6. All right, you will actually get um, 2.33. Now, if you have the second order, all right, divided by the third order streams, the number that is, all right, you will actually have 6 divided by 1, which is equal to six all right so the bifurcation ratio what are, what are in fact the means of the ratios this is the first ratio and this is in fact the second ratio all right so they are in fact two ratios so 2.33 plus six divided by two all right you will actually get 8.33 divided by two all right, and then you will get a total value. Of, well, I didn't mean total value. I meant um, you will get a value of 4.165. Now, 4.165 is, in fact, the bifurcation ratio. So the bifurcation ratio, that's when BR is actually supposed to be B, um, R and B, right? But it doesn't matter. matter. But uh, the bifurcation ratio is, in fact, 
five. All right, so keep that in mind for me, please. Now, what do you understand about what is in fact the significance of the bifurcation ratio? What we just calculated there, we determined so far the first order versus the second order, the second order versus the third order. We determined the means of both ratios, and we got a value of 4.165. What does that mean? Oh, the bifurcation ratio is in fact a very significant mathematical tool that is used to determine the extent or how prone to which an area is said to be uh, subjected to flooding. All right. Um, usually you compare different bifurcation ratios, for example, one drainage basin versus another. All right. And in doing so, you have to understand that um, if you have the higher um, bifurcation, bifurcation ratio out of two, you should bear in mind that the one with the higher bifurcation ratio, that particular um, drainage basin, would in fact be subjected to um, uh, a greater probability of flooding. All right, and it would vice versa. A lower bifurcation ratio would most probably be associated with a lower um, probability or a lower rate of flooding. All right, so vice versa, it works both ways. Oh, I also want to remember something very important as well. Um, if you have a higher um, stream order, all right, or a higher number of stream orders, all right, um, that is actually associated with a larger drainage basin. Keep that in mind for me, please. All right, in terms of the size of a drainage basin, larger drainage basins usually have a higher um, number of stream orders. So in terms of the size of a drainage basin, the size of a drainage basin could either be um, large or small. All right, we just um, refer to large or small in this particular context. All right, with respect to drainage basin size, right, you should bear in mind that larger basins have a greater surface area. And if they have a greater surface area, they will actually capture a greater um, amount of precipitation. And in doing so, there will be a greater peak discharge, right? Which, is, which means there will be a higher volume of water, right? Traversing the entire area, all right? Now, given the size of the area, given the large area that we are talking about, especially given a large drainage basin, that means that there will be a greater distance for the actual water to simply cover. All right, that means it will take a longer time for the water to simply flow over the larger basin itself. Hence the reason why there will in fact be a longer lag time. Now that being said, students, the opposite will in fact be associated with um, the small drainage basin. As a matter of fact, small drainage basin simply will mean you will have a, um, you will capture, right, less precipitation. All right, you have a smaller surface area, you will capture less precipitation. In doing so, all right, um, you will have a small peak discharge, right? Or a lower peak discharge, not small, but lower peak discharge because you will have a lower volume of water simply traversing across the landmass at any given point in time. However, given the fact that you have, um, with respect to the volume, but at the same time, given the fact that you have a small surface area, right, of the basin itself is a small surface area, that simply means the the streams or the channels and water would react very quickly, all right, um, to the amount of moisture, to the volume of water coming in to those particular streams. And in doing so, the, there will in fact be a shorter lag time. All right, so keep that in mind for me. Okay, um, so let's go through quickly with respect to the shape of the basin. You can actually see the elongated basin is the narrow one. Um, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we have the broad or round basin. Now, first and foremost, elongated basins um, basically have a longer lag time, as you can see from the storm hydrograph at the bottom here, um, longer lag time, okay? Um, they also produce a lower peak discharge in comparison to broad or round basins, which have a, a higher peak flow, a higher peak discharge, and a very shorter lag time. Look how narrow the actual curve is, all right? Remember also, um, the elongated basins will in fact produce um, possess uh, lower drainage densities because it is very narrow in comparison. You see the watershed is very close by, it is very narrow, associated with um, very steep terrain or very steep topography, all right? Um, whereas on the elongated, sorry, whereas on the broad or round basin, you actually have a major or larger area um, to which you will have um, uh, a shorter distance for water to simply um, to reach the main channel, primarily because of the fact that um, these streams are said to be equidistant as it relates to the main channel itself. A shorter basin, broader, sorry, broad or rounder basins basically possess a, um, what we call, they tend to have a, a gentler topography, all right, um, gentler slope in comparison to elongated basins. Given the fact that the streams are equidistant in rounder or broad basins, they are much more prone to flooding, hence they have a higher bifurcation ratio in comparison to elongated basins, which have a lower bifurcation ratio. 
Um, so keep that in mind for please. I hope this is actually very informative. Any question you have, feel free.